Hello everyone and thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to the final part of my big swatching series. Last time we swatched liquid watercolors and inks and this time we are going to swatch watercolors and tubes, Schmincke super granulating colors as well as paints by Daniel Smith. It's over 40 colors and I'm going to swatch them in real time. So obviously this is going to be a long video. Let's have a good time. Now sit back and enjoy. Voice over Monica logging out. Now like you have seen in my latest haul video, I got four different sets. I got the Deep Sea, the Limited Edition Haze, Limited Edition Forest, as well as the Volcano set. There's five tubes in each box and that equals 20 and not 16 colors, like I said in my art haul. By the way, sorry for that. And I actually already put this into my watercolor palette. This palette is also from my latest haul. This is mostly Schmincke super granulating paints as well as all of my Daniel Smith colors. The ugly logo I covered up with this beautiful sticker is by my beautiful friend Adina, also known as Petit Penbu. She is an exceptional watercolor artist and possibly the biggest watercolor nerd that I know. Honestly, she has so much knowledge and she helped me out and gave me so many tips so, so many times. Definitely go and check her out. I don't want to spoil too much, so I'm gonna open this for you. So the first five colors in each row are the Schmincke Super Granulating colors, except for the last row. Only two of the Volcano colors made it into this watercolor palette and I will get back to that in a bit. Now, without further ado, let's start with the Deep Sea set. All right, guys, let's get started with Deep Sea Violet. Spoiler alert, one of my favorites. Are you ready? Let's just dab it some so that the granulation becomes more evident. Now let's make the magic happen. In the meantime, let me write it down real quick. Guys, now ain't that gorgeous? Now that it's slowly drying, you can see some pinkish yellowish particles at the corner up here, as well as down there. Looks like a violet paints gray with some sort of vanilla going on. Loving it. Moving on to the next. This is Deep Sea Indigo. Let's see how dark I can get. Now adding some water. Next is this one. It's called Deep Sea Blue. And this one looks really opaque. Let's actually lift some of it. By the way, when I swatch with gouache, I like to have these really crisp edges. With watercolors though, I like to be a little more freehand. I don't mind if you have these feathering edges. Let me know how you feel about it, how you do it. Everybody's different after all. Now that the deep sea indigo is drying, you see that you have that turquoise as well as some sort of ultramarine shining through. No, I'm not a nerd about pigments but I know that many of you are. I'll put the pigments for you in the video. Next is Deep Sea Green, number 954. Oh my gosh, how gorgeous is that? And lastly from the set is gonna be Deep Sea Black, number 955. By the way, there's so much dust going on here. I feel like art just really likes to attract dust. Let's see how black this really is. So far, it looks really neutral, slightly more on the coolish side. Thank you. 
this is actually really awesome. We have like this warm gray with some blue going on. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can see that. It looks really interesting. Just let it dry for a bit and we're going on with the haze set. Next color you're gonna see is one of my absolute favorites. It's just, you will see. At first glance, I'm getting moon glow vibes. I don't know if you can see it. So first impression is a purpley gray. You can see immediately once you add water to it, the pink comes out. By the way, I forgot to tell you what color this is. So this is called Haze Pink number 966. And I love that they called it that because you really see these pink tones I haven't checked the pigments yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if there is some potter's pink in it. And also you got some turquoise here. I love it. Let's put some water on here. Maybe there. I sound like Bob Ross. You can see what's going on in real time. It's just insane. It's crazy. I love, love, love this color. And next one is gonna be Haze Blue, number 967. All right, this looks like paints gray pretty much, but I think I said the same about deep sea indigo. Next up we got haze indigo. I'm a sucker for indigo. I own that color by so many brands. I'll never get tired of it. Let me know down in the comments which one your happy color is. I know that a lot of people are into moon glow, which I totally understand, so am I. Quinacridone Rose seems to be a favorite as well. Okay, this one's dark, just like it's supposed to be. Dabbing in some water, see what happens. It looks like I might run out of space on this paper, but I will try my best. Next one is Haze Brown, number 969. On the tube, it looks more like green. It actually is brown. Brown with a sepia olive undertone. This looks so nice together, doesn't it? And lastly, we got Haze Black, number 970. Oh, super opaque, this one. This feels like therapy to me, guys. Can you relate? All right, so I have some more space here for the forest set. And I think I might spread the volcano set down here in a horizontal line. I have no choice because I'm out of space here. All right, here's the forest set. So we are starting with this one here, number 941. It's forest olive. Forest olive looks like a very bright color on the tube. I'm not a green kind of person, but I do love olive. It's so pretty. I think olive looks nice with so, so many colors, especially with a salmony pink. Next one is forest green, number 942. Ooh, this one's also very pretty. I can imagine this one looks nice with a baby pink. Now with the green so far, I see that there is granulation for sure, but I don't see that much of a color shifting effect just yet. Let's just be patient and see how it dries. Next one is Forest Blue, number 943. And if I remember correctly, this one was also one of my favorites. And yes, indeed, this one's... I have no words. This is <laughs> just wow. Again, I'm not a green person, but I see myself using this color a lot. I'm really into bluish greens, also into yellowish greens, into greens greens, not so much. All right, and next is Forest Brown, number 944. In the pen, it just looks like green, honestly, but maybe when it dries, some brown will come through. So far, I don't see much brown in it. And now lastly, guys, we got Forest Gray, 
number 945. And after that, we will continue with the Volcano set. And spoiler alert, it really is the most disappointing set, unfortunately. So far, I'm really happy with the sets here. So this is Forest Gray, and yes, it is a gray with a greenish undertone. Can we get darker? I'm still not seeing any brown in this. It looks mossy, though. This one, though? Actually, no, this is not a brown either. It really is like a green. But when you lift it, I'm actually seeing some sort of turquoise color here. Some brownish tint as well here on this edge, but just ever so slightly. I love how this is drying. I see some turquoise in it. Can you see it? Maybe it's just me. The more it's drying, the more I see similarities between these two. This one's more on the cooler side, whereas this one is more on the warmer side. But I must admit, the forest blue I'm most obsessed with when it comes to the forest set. All right, lastly, we got the volcano set, and as mentioned, not a fan of it, not at all. So this set includes Volcano Yellow, Volcano Orange, Volcano Red, as well as Volcano Violet and Volcano Brown. Only two out of the five different colors made it into my watercolor palette, and the reason is three of them are unusable in my opinion. So the culprits, the ones that I hate, are Volcano Yellow, Volcano Orange, and Volcano Red. These three here are garbage. I will swatch them for you anyways, and then you decide if you are really willing to invest into the set. Here are these little suckers. Let me go and re-wet them real quick. Spritz some water on it. In the meantime, let me show you the other colors that behave similarly. They are from different brands. So we got Windsor Newton Terra Vert number 637, I think. And this is also Terra Vert, however, this is yellow shade, it's number 638. And this one, Sennelier Blue Violet number 903. I don't know if you can tell, but there's not much pigment output with these paints. Actually, Royal Blue by Sennelier is also <laughs> affected by it. What it feels like when you re-wet these pens. And even if you use the paints straight out of the tube, it just feels very gummy, it is super sticky, it doesn't feel like watercolor whatsoever, it feels like you're trying to spread binder, it's gooey, it takes ages for the paint to dry, it lifts like crazy, you just get this really blotchy color. I mean, compare these two to the Forest Olive, as well as the Forest Green by Schmincke. The shades are similar, but this looks like watercolor. This does not. So yeah, you get the very same effect with the three colors I'm gonna show you. Let's start with this one. This is Volcano Yellow number 911. Pun not intended. See, doesn't even want to reactivate proper. It feels so gummy. There. It's all wet and it doesn't even spread. It doesn't flow at all. And it's just so ugly of a yellow. I can't remember last time I thought something was a waste of money. Next up is this one. This is Volcano Orange. And again, same thing here. It feels very gooey. <laughs> you know what this looks like? This looks like diluted ketchup. It looks like first thing that comes out of a Heinz bottle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now if you're asking, can I go darker with it? I will try my best. I'll try to get as much pigment out here as I can. Oh, it's a very dirty, ugly ketchup kind of red. I don't like it. Now if any one of you has the same set at home, or the same colors at least, and your experience is different, just let me know because I don't want to blame Schminke. I'm hoping that I just got a really bad batch because if not, then it means that they're selling paints despite knowing that they suck. Like if you saw this, would you think this is a nice watercolor? So yeah, this one here, this is the Volcano Red. 
Number 913. Let's go darker. Now let's just add water and see what happens. Whether or not it affects the paint at all. Now many minutes have passed and it's not even starting to dry. However, you can see granulation here. But then again, these colors, they just aren't pretty. They are not. Now enough complaining. Let's continue with a color that is actually pretty nice. And that is Volcano Violet. Now this one is also a little on the gooier side. It does feel like it does have more binder in it than other watercolors. However, it flows much nicer. I feel like this is more of a unique and special color in comparison to these three. Indeed, I think it's a really gorgeous color. It is like Potter's Pink, but with some purple to it. It's not yet dry, but you already see this lavender colored edge. And the granulation effect on this is very, very strong. And lastly, we got Volcano Brown, number 915. And that one actually made it into my palette. So this one is a sepia brown with a pinkish undertone. And maybe I'm just imagining things, but I already see a tint of turquoise in there. I might be wrong though. So first time I swatched this to decide what comes into my new palette, I like this color, but I wasn't a big fan of it. I was not too excited about it. But this time, I must say, I'm really loving this color. These two saved this purchase for me. They are so stunning. Now I have a little space left here and I was thinking, what if I mix three different colors? Maybe making a gradient? Okay, so I decided I want to see what happens if I have deep sea violet, deep sea green and volcano violet blend into each other. So I'm going to do this real quick here, starting with deep sea violet. Now some deep sea green. Guys, this looks stunning, in my opinion. Now let's mix these two in equal parts on the palette here. And we do the same with these two. Now this becomes sort of a gray. Could this be haze pink, guys? <laughs> this one? Let's put it here in this corner. Now last one. This mix here between these two, but a little more on the bluer side or violet. Now this mix here, the deep sea green with the volcano violet, it does actually resemble the haze pink. It's not quite the same, but it looks similar. It's like a more vibrant version of it, actually. Now these two, the more I look at them, the less I hate them, actually. I still don't think they're beautiful shades, however, on this paper, at least, the granulation is a little more evident. We're not done yet, actually, guys. So this is it for the Schmincke Super Granulation Sets. Now we're going to continue with Daniel Smith watercolors. And in case you're still with me, in case you're still watching this, you are my lovelies. You are the best, my VIPs. Please take this opportunity to give me a thumbs up. That really helps my channel. And without further ado, let's go get them Daniel Smith colors. Now, during the swatching, I realized that the artist paper ain't too bad. I'm starting to kind of like it. So I was thinking maybe for the final swatches, I will use the back side of the artist paper. So it still has a texture to it, but it is less prominent. There's still some indentations, so we will be able to see some granulation, if there is any. And the Daniel Smith watercolors I now have in this beautiful pencil case by Heikala. And we are going to start with the two Primatech colors that I got. 
So we got Rhodonite Genuine and May in Blue Genuine. I'm gonna start with Rhodonite Genuine, giving my paints a nice spritz. Let it sit there for a bit. In the meantime, I can explain you some more of the setup. This part here is all Daniel Smith colors, except for maybe this one. I think this is a Schmincke watercolor. Right here, same thing. Most of it are Daniel Smith. And this one right here is the only color that is not from Schmincke or Daniel Smith. This one is actually a Shinhan Pass watercolor gouache hybrid. However, I think it's pretty sheer. I don't think it's opaque at all. And this one is called Shadow Green and it is such a beautiful tint. I love this color. Let me show you real quick. So I have this piece of scrap paper here and look at this beautiful green color. It's so highly pigmented too. So I needed this to be in my palette. Anyway, let's start with the Rhodonite Genuine. Let's see. I like this color a lot. It's very sheer, but still pretty intense, I feel. And next is this one, the Mayan Blue Genuine, also a Prima Tech color. Also pretty sheer, but still very, very vibrant, I think. I feel like mixing these two, actually. So we're getting a nice purple. Reminds me of lavender or bisteria. Let's actually put it right here. I love it. Maybe put some more rhodonite into it. Now it's even more purple. And as you can see, these two colors, they do granulate. All right, guys, so I just decided this is gonna be the basis for my next painting. It looks really awesome, I love it. Guys, I actually made a huge mistake. I just noticed this is not May and Blue Genuine. This here is Manganese Blue Hue. So <laughs> the mix I just created was between these two. So this is the Primatech color I was gonna swatch. I'm gonna correct this mistake real quick here. Let me write it down. So my bad, this one is gonna be next. This is the correct one. This is the Primatech one. Maybe I should take a break and go eat lunch. But I'm just so on the flow right now. This is so much fun. I really enjoy swatching. It's one of my favorite things to do. So now we're gonna mix the actual Primatech colors. I must say though, this mix does look similar, doesn't it? Gotta wait for this to dry. Putting this aside, let's just continue. We will check on it later. So next up, it's gonna be Lunar Blue. Where are you, Lunar Blue? There it is. Oh, this is dark. And next is the In and Throne Blue. It's a blue that is more on the warmer side. And I think a color that is very similar to this one I'm swatching right now is Delft Blue by Schmincke. I got Delft Blue in another palette, in my Schmincke palette. And this one is a mixed palette. Isn't this gorgeous? I love it. I really do like the backside of this Arches paper. I find it so much easier to paint on. Now we're gonna try Moon Glow. I know that most people own this color already, but like I said, in Germany, it's really hard to get your hands on Daniel Smith watercolors. And now that you can, I still needed to think about it because it is quite an investment. So Moon Glow, I was pretty sure I would like. That's why I got the big boy. And sure enough, it is such a special color. It's such a unique color, especially when it dries. I totally get the appeal of it. It's like this purple black with some lavender and also some turquoise going on. You can already see the pigment separating. Such a pretty color. Okay, next up is Indigo by Daniel Smith. Now another Indigo that I really, really like is by Mugello. But this one is slightly different, but just as pretty. So far, I feel like you can't do wrong with Daniel Smith watercolors. This is actually not good, guys, the fact that I like these colors so, so much. Because now I want to explore more of Daniel Smith. I will never 
quit my job to become a professional artist because how else can I afford all these art supplies? I'm wondering if everyone who's into art is dreaming of becoming a professional artist. Next one is Paints Gray, which is somewhat similar to Indigo, but a little more on the greener side, I think. Okay, so this one is indeed more neutral and with a tad of turquoise or red, I don't know, something that neutralizes this. It really is such a unique, gorgeous color. Next up is Jane's Gray and it is a gray with a tint of lavender, at least that's how I feel about it. And this is just something I find so fascinating with watercolors. When you put the paint on paper, you sometimes feel like, oh, this looks exactly like this color or that color. My first impression was <laughs> it looks like moon glow, but then just two seconds later, I was like, nah, it looks more like paint's gray. But now with every second, the color is changing and changing, and it's just something very fascinating about it. I kind of like that surprise effect. It's actually something many people find annoying with gouache, the fact that you cannot predict how it dries. Next is Shadow Violet. To be honest with you guys, first time I swatched it, I was disappointed. I was expecting something a little more purple, but then again, when it dries, it shifts the color completely, you will see. Okay. I need more pigment. Now the more I look at it, the more I love it. This will look so, so different when it's dry, guys. Let's dab on some water. All right, now leave it alone. We will see in a bit. Now, next one is Lunar Violet. It is similar to Shadow Violet, but even more gray, less purplish, I think. Now that the shadow violet has almost dried, you can see that there are turquoise colored particles in it. There's a very ever so slight pink shade to the lighter colors. Now I tested this one in my sketchbook and the turquoise colored particles are really, really evident on that paper and it was very cheap Arteza watercolor paper. And now this one, the lunar violet is like the shadow violet, but without the weird colors going on. So no turquoise visible in here. And the pinkish tint to the lighter colors is almost not visible. I can still see it, but it's just barely visible. Now let's move on with the lunar black. Before we continue with colors that are a little happier. Now the lunar black is a deep black with crazy granulation. It is still wet, but I do love this. In fact, I love it so much, I do regret that I didn't get the large tube. All right, quinacridone deep gold, here we go. My God, these two look nice together. Now this one actually reminds me of the gouache color I swatched earlier. Let me go get it. It looks similar to Amber by Holbein. And by the way, it's getting really dark. I don't like to rush things, but I gotta hurry just a bit. There's not many colors left. I think we're soon done. Next is gonna be another very intense color. And that is green gold. Look how vibrant this one is. When you water it down, it looks more like a yellow. How dark can we go? Looks like I got a spot left for two more colors in this row. So let's continue with new Gumbosh, a warm yellow that so many people own. And I'm not into yellows that much, but these two, new Gumbosh and Quinacridone Deep Gold, they are really pretty. 
By the way, if you can recommend a watercolor that looks very, very much like a vanilla yellow, and by vanilla I mean not too lemony, not too much like Naples yellow, maybe something more like this, like some off-white kind of yellow, I will definitely get my hands on buff titanium, but I still want something that is like a pastelic sort of vanilla color. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful, I love this. I think this yellow should be a staple in everyone's watercolor palette. Now moving on to coral, quinacridone coral. Now this color is something that I want to call an enhancer. On its own, it is a very vibrant coral, but for my liking, it's actually a little too vibrant. However, you can really add some boom to a color with ease by using that. I know that a lot of people care a lot about light fastness and that's why they don't use fluorescent colors a lot. Me personally, I don't think I will ever sell any originals, at least not this year. I'm thinking more like creating some prints. So I am obviously gonna scan my artworks. And that's why I think fluorescent colors are really useful to mix into any color to make it a little more vibrant. Now this coral here is super vibrant, yes, but it is not super offensive in my opinion. This light coral over here, I can actually see myself using it as blush to just glaze a tiny bit of it onto cheeks or the nose. I'm really happy that I got it. So far, Daniel Smith watercolors do not disappoint me. Next is Quinacridone Violet, which is such a gorgeous color. I'm really into these wine reds. Oh my god. <laughs> How deep this is. So pretty. Now this color here, the Quinacridone Violet, it's a weird one. I do love this color when applied thickly and heavily, like this range over here. However, I don't like how it shifts into the blues and like into some dirty kind of violet over here. Like maybe if you look at this here, this is something I would rather want, but in comparison to these shades over there, this one just looks dirty. All right, guys, there's only two tubes left. Let's continue with Perlin Violet. Really, really liking this color. Now this one looks like a dirtier violet, a very earthy kind of violet. The gradient is nicer in comparison to this one. It just looks intentional, you know? Here it looks like it's two separate colors. And last but not least, another favorite color of mine, and that is Indian Red. I already own this by Schminke, and I just wanted to see how the Daniel Smith version of it looks like. It's a color that I run out of very, very quickly, and it's just so, so pretty. It's like this reddish brown, but I do see some pink in there. I can imagine to use this a lot in skin tones. It looks more like an orange on the palette. All right, guys, this is all the Daniel Smith colors that I got, but there's still some space left here, so I will actually swatch some other colors that I have in my palette. And I think it's a good idea to continue with some other Schminke paints that I have in here. I want to show you Schminke's Potter's Pink. It actually makes sense to have it in this row because this color is somewhat similar to those. Potter's Pink is an amazing color. It granulates like crazy. It's a soft color, not at all aggressive, and I think it mixes really well with other colors. I will show you a nice mix actually, but first let me show you what else I got in here. How about the manganese violet? It's a pretty boring kind of violet in my opinion. However, this one also granulates like crazy, which is the reason why I put it in this palette. 
And also I have coral and rhodonite, which is more on the warmer side. And if I want to make something that is a little cooler, it's good to have manganese violet in here. Then we got Paints Gray Bluish, another schmink color. And this one's similar to Lunar Blue. However, Lunar Blue has some yellow going on in here and Paints Gray doesn't have that. And lastly, let's see what actually happens if I mix the Potter's Pink with Schmink of Forest Blue. The result, I hope, is gonna be some sort of a grayish color and maybe I can recreate Haze Pink with it. We will see what happens. Let's add more green or blue. It's called Forest Blue. Now it looks more like gray. I'm impressed. This is amazing. Okay guys, I should stop because it looked kind of impressive and now I aft it up by layering too much, but I just can't stop. Then again, you just gotta experiment, especially when you're not familiar with granulating colors. I'm definitely very inexperienced with it. Anyway, I think I should stop here. So I added some shadow green from Shin Han here. This color up here, I know it looks a little dirty right now because I played too much with it, but doesn't this look a bit like shadow violet, you guys? Remember how I said I see some turquoise in here? I mixed this with the forest blue, which is a turquoisey kind of blue. Fascinating. Anyway guys, the sun is setting. I made it just in time. I hope you found this video cozy and relaxing. Let me know down in the comments if you would buy any of the colors that you've seen today yourself. Now that you've seen what kind of colors I'm into, maybe you can recommend something to me. It doesn't necessarily need to be from Schminke or Daniel Smith. I will gladly look into any brand. If you like this video and you aren't subscribed yet, please consider to subscribe. It does help me a lot and I'm always trying to put out the best content for you guys. Wherever you are in the world, I hope that you are safe. I appreciate you. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys, and have a fantastic day.